Hey everyone, welcome to the second GLSL tutorial. Today we'll be making this grid. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of variables. We can change the vertical amount of lines, the horizontal amount of lines, and the width of the lines. So this is still a pretty basic script. We start by assigning a color to our pixel, in this case black. Um, and then we calculate the size of uh, the parts between the lines. This may seem a bit counterintuitive, but in order for the lines to be spaced equally, we need to calculate how big uh, these parts are. And the parts in the middle are easy, but we want these parts on the outside to be equal as well. That's why we have to calculate the parts. The way we do this is by uh, taking one, uh, which is the entire uh, coordinate, like maximum coordinate. You get you go from zero zero to one one, uh, one zero zero one, um, and one minus all these lines uh, divided by the amount of parts would give us the size of a part. So we do one minus uh, the amount dot x, which is 7, in this case 7, um, and then we divide this number by the amount of lines plus 1, because we all have always always have one more part than lines, you, because we it closes it in on both sides, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, well we have seven lines so this way we get the size uh, of this part and now we get the uh, size of the part y by doing the same but with amount dot y this runs until there are no more lines to draw um, and it checks if the pixel we're drawing is uh, between a lower and a upper boundary of a line so it starts by drawing this pixel, then this, then this, and it, at a certain point it comes here, and then it's uh, bigger than the first part, and smaller than the first part plus the width. And if it starts to get bigger than the first part plus the width, uh, then it's black again. Um, and we continue this way up, and then we do the same for the y direction. Um, so we have two if statements drawing horizontally and vertically and that's basically it so i'm going to delete my code and we're going to do this from scratch okay the first thing we need is a glsl top and we can close this down then go to common and give it a resolution uh, whatever you want i'm doing 1280 1280 uh, you can make it uh, 1280 720 it doesn't really matter um, now we go in here by pressing viewer active. In the future we will uh, download um, code editors and if you already have something like Sublime Text or want to work that you can download it but, but for the sake of simplicity I'm going to keep working inside of this. Um, we can go in here and delete this, uh, delete this comment and let's start by setting our initial color uh, initial color and as you learned in the previous tutorial this takes four variables so if you want to give it a color like red we do one uh, zero zero and one for alpha now it's red um, Let's work with red lines, fine. We can head back to our GLSL top and go to factors. And first thing we need is uh, amount. And you, the first two values will be uh, vertical and horizontal. So we do, uh, let's say four and six. Then we add a vector and we do width. And the first one will be our width. Let's start with 0.02. And now we need to declare these uniforms. So uniform fact to amount. Um, this will, we need a fact to because uh, it takes two inputs. 
uh, and then uniform float width. Now we can control these variables with these uh, numbers. So you could even link this to uh, something from the job world. Uh, could work. I don't know what happens. Um, now we go into our code and after our color, we going to calculate part uh, X. And we do this by typing float. We make a new variable called part X. Uh, and as I showed earlier, we do one minus amount dot X. Uh, by doing amount dot X, we access the first variable. Um, I think dot A works too, but I always do X. And if you want to access the next one, that would be Y, Z, and I think W somehow. Um, but for now, X, then times the width, um, and then divide this by amount dot X plus one. Now we have our part X. Now we do part Y float part y equals one oh, we can copy this um, and change these to y now we have our part y now we can create our for loop for loop um, start this by typing four and opening the brackets int i equals zero we start at zero and then uh, we continue this for loop while uh, i is smaller than amount dot x or uh, i is smaller than amount dot y. So now this for loop continues until i is uh, equal or bigger than amount dot x and amount dot y. So for the first loop, it starts at zero, it draws lines and it continues and every time, uh, let's type that, we do i++, plus plus. every time um, it uh, it finishes, uh, i gets uh, uh, increased by one, uh, so next time i will be one, and uh, the in this case, the last round will be when i is five, because it started at zero, it will draw the sixth line uh, at uh, at uh, when i is 5 and then next time if it checks uh, i will be plus 1 so i will be 6 and it won't be smaller than amount dot y because uh, 6 is not smaller than 6 and then it will stop and we're finished okay press enter and add in these curly brackets uh, in here will be our for loop the first thing we're going to do is check if the pixel we're uh, working with is between the lower and upper boundary of the line. So to do this, we insert an if statement and um, to check for the lower bound, we're going to do vuv.x. This gives us our current x coordinate and we check if it's bigger than uh, part x uh, times i plus one uh, plus um, i times width. Um, what we do here is um, we check if it's bigger than our lower boundary. So if we're in our um, first line, so our first iteration of this loop, uh, we need to draw a line uh, when the coordinate is between um, the lower and upper boundary, and that is one time the, 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 the height of the black part, that's the lower boundary, and the height of the black part plus the width of the line, that's the upper boundary. So for the first line, I will be zero, and we have part X, which is our height, times I plus one, but we start with zero, so, so this is one. So we have times one, um, so we have one part, one black part, and we add uh, the 
width times i but in the first iteration that's zero so in the first iteration this does nothing so that's correct for our first loop but on our on our second uh, iteration so for the second line the lower boundary is one part one width of the line and then another part so if this is one part x gets uh, multiplied by two we have two black parts and this by one so that will work then we can add in two and signs and do the upper boundary so vuv dot x is smaller than um, let's see open brackets i plus one times the width plus i plus one times part x and we can close the if statement now what this does is um, it checks if the coordinate is below the upper boundary and the upper boundary is the width um, plus the parts um, and this time for the first iteration we need uh, we also need the width so uh, the upper boundary of the first iteration is one part and one width so that's correct and for the second iteration it's two parts and two times the width so that'll work uh, now we can open our if statement and do these curly brackets again and give this pixel a color and um, we made the background uh, red so we can give this another color so we do fac 4 and let's do let's make something really ugly let's do red and green like it's christmas it's not but um and now close this off and now we have our first uh first checks i think now this is still not working um going to continue we can copy this uh, because this was only for the vertical direction so for the for the x for the x um now we need to do it for the maybe i'm wrong maybe this was the horizontal direction i think x is this way and y is this way um now we can change this to y so just replace all the x's uh with a y also in part x and part y now we still have uh one issue uh, and i see what i forgot uh, i have to close these off um, and now it should be working oh yeah and it's really ugly so i think i'm going to change this black back to black so now the background is black and now we can change this color to anything we want i think i'm gonna make it white again uh, just a quick tip if you do fact four and type in one instead of four times uh, a number it just fills out four times one so it will give one 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 uh, and that is rgb is one so that makes white and alpha is white so it's white now so this is our original um yeah code uh now as you can see we can change these amounts uh and change the thickness make sure that like if you do comma uh so decimal numbers it behaves yeah not perfectly i mean it works but if you want to add something in like uh like a chop value uh, make sure to round it so you can um if we do a noise and let's say time slice and make it move and increase it a bit so it goes all the way now if we were to add this uh it will do funky stuff oh let's make it uh positive um it might be better to round this so do round uh i think yeah now it's now it's just an integer integer and it works a bit better um all right that's all i have for you today and uh, next video will be mandelbrot so uh, stay tuned 
and I'm sorry it took a while to make this video. Uh, thanks a lot for watching these tutorials and if you have any questions be sure to uh, drop them down in the comments and this file is up on my Patreon so you can check it out there. The Mandelbrot file is uh, already there so if you're uh, in a hurry and really want to learn how that works go over there. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.